Vegas 12, and welcome to Getting Real Estate in Vegas. I am Bridget Magnus, and this is the Vegas Video Network. <laughs> now, if you've got questions, problems, or suggestions, please be sure to get them in to us by email at gettingrealatvegasvideonetwork.com or call our toll-free listener hotline at 866-966-4599. And don't forget that those of you who are watching us live should be sure to go ahead and join us on live chat. Get those questions answered right away. Um, we would like to take just a minute to thank those of you watching on the Vegas Video Network, those of you who've uh, downloaded this and all of our other wonderful programming like golf and other four-letter words via iTunes, those of you who are watching on YouTube, those of you who are enjoying us with Roku, and those of you who are listening to us on the radio, that's KSHP 1400 AM on Friday evenings. So then, now that we've got all the housekeeping out of the way, let's go ahead and have the Friday figures. All right, all information is from our local MLS system as of this morning. We had 11,124 available units. That is down from last week and down 8% from last month. Um, the median price on single family houses was up to $140,000. I love saying that. Um, the median price on a condo is unchanged at $55,000. And the median price on a townhome also unchanged at $80,000. Now, of our total availables, we do have 3,249 foreclosed properties month over month. That is down 23%. Yow! Um, the median price on those, however, is up to $109,000. I'd just like to point out that that is a 9% jump from the lows we hit during the summer of 2011. We do also have 5,079 short sales currently available. That's down 15% from last month. Median price of those rock solid at about 110,000. We do have 3,933 3, non-distressed classic sales available. That's down 7% from last month, but the price on those is up to 185,000 as a median. In the last 30 days, we've closed 3,844 properties, up 5% from last month. Median sales price was 108,000. Median list price was unchanged at 110. We do also have 12,180 properties under contract waiting to be closed, down 6%. There was a big rush, as you may recall, to get things closed by the end of the year. All the institutional sellers, including banks, wanted to get as much stuff off the books as possible before entering the nice, bright, shiny new year. As far as rentals go, we do have 5,800 available this morning and um, 1,913 new leases. Median rent on both is $1,095. So let's talk about the news. I've got some good news. Oh, yes. Um, our love number of visitors here in Las Vegas is back up to pre-recession levels, even though our convention figures are still down. Yay, we're going to fill all those hotel rooms. Um, the feds are still floating a plan to rent out foreclosures that they own. Um, remember that the federal government owns foreclosures through, um, through um, the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And technically speaking, we kind of have to add the ones that they own through Fr Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, even though those are both private corporations, right? Yeah, private corporations backed by the feds. Um, there are some new FHA limits. We're going to talk about that later. My last local news item is for those of you who have, res uh, have uh, reservations at the Las Vegas Hilton. Um, they have dropped the Hilton name. They are now just the Las Vegas Hotel. So those of you with reservations, remember where you're going and know you're not getting Hilton points. All right, then. That brings us to a wonderful topic. First time we've ever done this. I'm going to get out my crystal ball. There it is. We are going to talk about real estate predictions for 2012. So go ahead and bookmark this episode so that you can see how wrong I am. Don't you go anywhere. That's good. So you can see just how wrong I was come December. Does that sound like a fun game? OK, let's get started, shall we? All right, my first prediction, and I'm going to stand by this one. Interest rates for mortgages will rise. 
I just do not see a way around this. If the economy gets better, then the Federal Reserve is going to raise the interest rates that banks pay one another, and they're going to have to pay to uh, pass on the lack of savings to you. If the economy gets worse, then banks are going to say, oh, you know, lending is a risky proposition. We deserve more money for it. If things get really bad and um, we have more gridlock in Congress, then there's the risk that um, people are going to demand more money for owning savings bonds, and that's going to push up your mortgage rates. So it doesn't matter what way you slice it. I cannot see a future where interest rates are still at 4% a year from now. The next thing is I do believe that foreclosures are going to resume. Banks will find a way around uh, AB 284, which basically makes them play a little bit nicer. They are going to figure out ways to get this inventory through the pipeline one way or the other, and we are going to have foreclosures restarting. The next thing that's going to happen is kind of a related thing. We are going to have more short sales. There will be more that are available. There will be more that are contingent. And God willing, there will be more that actually sell before the end of the year. Part of this is that the banks are wanting to go ahead and you know, get this done, stop hemorrhaging money. There are some tax implications that I will probably be talking about next week, so stay tuned for that one. Available units are going to stay in a range. We've been going from about 11,000 to about 16,000, and I think that's going to continue through 2012. However, when it comes to buying those units, cash will still be the king. We are still going to see a good solid third of our transactions, probably more, be all cash transactions. You know, bring the, bring the money order to the closing table, wire the money. We're not going to see new mortgages for a, a good solid third of our units that sell. I also believe that at least one builder is going to leave Las Vegas. I can't tell you whether it's going to be somebody going out of business or somebody just throwing up their hands and saying, you know, we're just not building any more houses in Las Vegas. We're picking up our bulldozers and going home. Don't know which it's going to be, but I am absolutely certain we will have at least one fewer builder at the end of 2012. We are also going to have more lawsuits, more lawsuits regarding foreclosures and bank misdeeds and mortgage modifications. Um, Banks are going to argue that state and local government don't have the authority to even think about prosecuting them because of a lack of jurisdiction. This is a long-standing pattern on the course of banks, and I think that particularly some of the state attorney generals are tired of that attitude. And that brings me to my last major prediction. Oh, there will be a foreclosure fraud settlement but it is not going to involve 50 states, and it's not even going to involve 49 states. I predict there will be at least one other state that joins California and saying, you know what, we're not cool with just saying, let bygones be bygones and, and pretend that the banks haven't done anything wrong. Okay then, we do not have a what were they thinking this week. If you have a what were they thinking, Take a picture of it and be sure to send that in to getting real at VegasVideoNetwork.com because we absolutely love when viewers interact with us. We love it. Do more of it. It's cool. All right, then. We're going to take a break for just a couple minutes, and I'll see you back then. Traditional media believes that after about three minutes, you'll tune out. Most Vegas media companies think if it doesn't jiggle, you won't tune in. At the Vegas Video Network, we think both are wrong. The Vegas Video Network is the first and only live online broadcast network that specializes in insider news and expert views about Vegas. We combine great storytelling with the ability to watch when and where you want on your computer, mobile device, or television. Discover the real Las Vegas. Visit VegasVideoNetwork.com. All right, who's ready for some real advice? You may require, recall that some weeks ago we talked about Congress saying that the FHA could raise limits for loans that they back. And while we were taking our little break over Christmas, the FHA did finally go ahead and get us new numbers for Clark County. <clears throat> 
Now, I'd like to stress, these numbers are just for Clark County, Nevada. They do not cover any other Nevada county. They do not cover any other county in the nation. This is strictly for locally originating loans on locally purchased property. And the new number is 400000 You can get an FHA-backed loan for a property with a purchase price of up to $400,000 and only pay 3.5% down. We have a question. Yeah, how is that different from what it was before? Well, I don't know if you recall that um, we did have a higher limit, and then um, that expired at the end of September. October 1, the limit went down to 289500 and so now we're opening up an, uh, over $100,000 more. It's a, it's a big jump. Now, I actually kind of have a problem with this. And um, my problem is that we're talking about more than a half of the houses in the whole valley are going to be now eligible for this financing. Median price on a single family home was $140,000. We're talking close on to three times the amount that uh, is better than three times the amount. So my, my problem is that if you can afford a $400,000 home, can't you really afford to put more than 3.5% down? Really? You can only afford to put 3.5% down and you think you can afford a $400,000 mansion? Think about that. What's our next question? Yeah, I think that, is, that part of that is, has to do with like neighborhoods in California. This, is, this has nothing to do with California. This is Clark County, Nevada does, only. Does that number not translate to California as well? No, no. Every county in America has a different number. Wow. This is just Clark County, Nevada. It, it goes to prim and no further than that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a fun question. Um, however, um, this is a great thing for buyers, especially buyers who you know were maybe on the edge. It is also something I need to make sellers aware of. If you are trying to sell a place that is marginal, I think that it is worth your time to consider, do I price this house at 405000 410000 or do I price it right at 400000 and see if maybe that opens me up to some more FHA buyers? So even though I, I question whether this is a good thing for the country, it is a good deal for both buyers and sellers. Just please, for the love of everything real estate, make sure that you can actually afford to make those payments. I'd hate to see you or anybody else get behind the eight ball because they can afford the 3.5% today but can't afford the mortgage payment next year, two years from now, 10 years from now. OK, then. I'm afraid that that does bring me to the end of another lovely show. And I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in and asking your wonderful questions. If you've got more questions, problems, suggestions, just want to rant for a little while, go ahead, send us an email to gettingreal at vegasvideonetwork.com or go ahead and call that full free hotline at 866-966-4599. I'm afraid live chat is going dead for the rest of the day. so. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, though, and tune in next week where we will have another great episode of Getting Real Estate in Vegas. Drive safe.